Hey Legionnaires, and welcome back. We're here with more Dawnless Days, and you guys have been asking for a unit overview for a long time, and I thought, you know what, we'll come back with the unit overview series, and we'll do the new faction, Lothlorien. Uh, the new elven faction, obviously, you know, you see them in the movies at Helm's Deep. They're, that, they're one of the, uh, the elven factions that are, like, sort of in the east. They're sort of, um, you know, between Isengard, really, and, like, the Wooden Realm and Dale, and that sort of area. Um, they're... Obviously led by Haldir in this uh, in this mod, and as you may already know, and they have obviously uh, Galadriel and Celeborn as like their as their joint rulers. I feel like that's all like what they are. I'm not really sure what their vibe is, but yes. Anyway, we are going to check out the new units. So we're going to start with swords, um, which is going to be swords and shot combined. Then we have I think. Um, if these guys stop shouting, so rude elves, come on. And then I have um, spears, we have pole arms, we have archers, uh, which are, as many people already know, are going to be the great strength of Galadrium uh, here today. And then we also have the cav and generals. So yeah, let's get straight on into it and we will check out these new new units. As you can see here, we have some of the lower tier stuff. It's what we work with, uh, how we work these, um, like these videos. We start with the low tier stuff and work our way up to the high tier for each section. So we'll start with the low tier swords. So um, yeah, we've got these Lorien Sword Company, which are technically a uh, levy medium uh, infantry unit. They have excellent melee defense, very poor armor, poor missile block chance, 135 ma man, or should I say elf unit, um, I guess I should say. Um, they have 26 melee attack, uh, 36 melee damage, which I think is going to be quite a constant for the sword units, uh, at least the, like, the melee infantry units. Uh, charge bonus of 20, melee defense 45, armor 20, health 115, which I think is going to be quite a steady standard thing for Lothlorien. Uh, morale is, it says 45, but it's actually base at four, uh, 34 if you don't involve all like the buffs and stuff that are involved. Um, speed 39, so they're pretty cool. Quick. Um, they're quicker than most men units, which I think are down to 37. Dwarves are like in the 20s, uh, much slower. Missile block chance 18. Uh, missile block chance has been massively changed in this new update. I will let you know. Things like shock and um, pole arms have very little uh, uh, missile block chance, as we'll come on to now. It's not just Lothlorien, it's a whole mod now. They've changed how missile block um, sort of works for units that are a bit don't have a shield, basically. Um, so yeah, these, these guys actually are pretty solid. Even though they're a levy unit, um, I've watched them in a few replays. You may have seen them in recent videos or streams. They hold for a long time, actually, still, because they're elves. So even though they're levy, they're really good, um, like, units, and they're pretty cheap as well. So they're definitely worth bringing, I feel like, um, in sieges or in land battles. They can hold the line, and they can still inflict a good amount of damage. And like, it's as you can see there on the defense, pretty solid. Lothlorien, I feel like, Generally, we'll come on to, and I'll probably keep repeating myself, a good defensive faction, I feel like. Um, I'm going to be really good in, like, defensive sieges, uh, in my opinion, anyway, for Dawn's Days. But anyway, yeah, these guys, as you can see, in, like, like the grey uniforms, um, like, really blending in with, like, sort of, like, the, the, the grey, uh, like, tree trunks that the Lothlorien kind of inhabits. I really do like the look of them. People were, like, saying, oh, like, low, like, they shouldn't have low tier stuff. But I feel like this is what a low tier unit would look like. Um, they're not necessarily, like, worse in skill. Like, they are a bit, because I guess that's what the mod has to do. But they're less armoured, which is the big thing. And they're, um... They're not really like, exactly going to war. They're just kind of like on a skirmish, uh, like if there was a skirmish in the wood or something with some orcs. That's kind of what I feel like the low tier stuff is um, in this mod. But anyway, we'll move on to the next unit here, which is the, um, these are the Amroth Sentinels, if I'm correct. I can haven't really learned the names fully, but this is a trained uh, unit. We'll have a quick look at it first. One of my favorite looking units, actually, I feel like for this um, for this update. I really like the look of them. I don't know what it is. It looks so, like the armor and the helmets look really streamlined. They look awesome. And the shields as well. Like design on these shields. The detail is amazing. I mean, look at that fair elven face. You'd kiss it if you could. But anyway. So yeah, we'll have a quick look at the stats. I mean, they look really good. 120. So we have gone down a little bit in size. Um, obviously, because we are now into trained units. It's a, a tier 2, I believe, unit. This is the best melee infantry unit you can get, by the way. They don't have any tier 3 stuff, which I quite like. Um, it's one of the weaknesses, I guess, for Dol Amroth. But I, uh, sorry, Dol Amroth. It's because they've called Amroth Sentinels. Um, for Lothlorien, um, it's one of their weaknesses. Um, but I feel like that's good. Uh, they need some weakness of some somewhere, and they have plenty of other strengths elsewhere. But yeah, you can see excellent melee defense, good melee attack. And we have increased to 34, so we have gone up a little bit now. Um, still at that 36 melee damage. Um, like I said, I think that's going to be a standard for melee infantry. Charge bonus 20, it's the same. Melee defense, even better at 50. Um, armor, 
at 40. Health at 115, again, that's standard. And uh, morale, same 54, but it's 43, which is still really good. That is solid um, morale. These guys, again, hold for a long, long time. Speed um, down 37. I think that's slightly down, um, down to, from 39. Mid-sub watch chance up to uh, 20, uh, is 22. But yeah, really solid unit. Again, I don't think you br you're not breaking your bank for a, uh, for a really good unit. I think for your bank for your buck, you're getting a good unit here when this unit's been used. Again, seen it in uh, lots of sieges, holes to like, I don't know, 20 or even sometimes sub-20 men. Um, so yeah, really good bang for your buck. And yeah, I would certainly recommend if you're using these on attack or defense, definitely worth bringing. Um, because it's the best sword infantry you're getting, and I feel like sword infantry is very key in a siege battle. Anyway, we're now moving on to shock. I'm going to put these guys in. I'm not going to do like a cut or something like I do um, when we change categories. I'm just putting shock infantry with the swords. It is obviously going to be mass differences of um, of uh, like st stats, but I feel like there's only one shock infantry. We'll slam them in with the rest of the swords. Um, but yeah, Galadrium Sword Warriors, the only shock infantry available. Down to 100 man unit. Again, another tier. I think these are tier 2. Uh, shock infantry again. They've got very poor missile block chance. Down at zero. Um, like I was saying, there is no missile block chance now for pole arms or for shock infantry. They have good melee or excellent melee attack. 48. So yeah, knocking any of the melee sword units out of the park. These guys send them in over the walls or even defending the walls. These guys will cut orcs down or just about anything down. It doesn't have to be orcs. Um, good melee defense, which is kind of weird for a shock infantry. Very aggressive unit. I wouldn't technically have thought ever thought of it like as a um. A defensive unit, but yeah, 38 melee defense, not like out of this world, but it's solid. It'll do you good. Um, health 115 again, morale, um, saying 59, but it's 48, so it's still again going up on the Amroth Sentinels, doing a very good job there. Speed 37, um, and yeah, I mean, charge bonus 25, so it's a little bit up, obviously, being a shock infantry. I think they could maybe push that up a little bit, uh, but yeah, melee damage as well, huge 47. So yeah, these guys. They're heavy hitters, and obviously these guys are the iconic ones that you see in uh, in in Helm's Deep, like man in the walls when they aren't using their bows. They look awesome. They really do. I do love the look of them. Um, yeah, this is what I would say is like these are the guys geared for war. These guys are going in. They're, this is the Galadrim armor that they get, they take to war, and they're wearing it, taking their big war swords. But yeah, if you're enjoying these unit uh, overviews and would like to see some more of them, do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new on here, and comment show your support. And make sure to hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any Dawnless Day's action. But yeah, we will move now on to the Spears. So I'll see you guys in a moment. So here we are with the Spears. Another unit looks very similar to the Amroth Sentinels. I actually don't think I've seen these guys used in any replays yet. Um, in fairness, I haven't seen many um, Dawnless Day's replays with Lothlorien yet being a new faction. But this is the Naeth. Spears, so uh, Naeth Infantry, so they're a pretty solid unit. I mean, heavy uh, spear infantry, so um, we're kind of pushing up a bit. Most of these units before been like sort of like uh, medium. I mean, I think the Amroth Sentinels actually are heavies as well. They have the same armor, so that would make sense. But these guys also have poor missile block chance, which is kind of a bit worrying for a spear unit. You know, having this big old shield, they don't have a very good missile block chance. It's 22. Poor armor as well at 40. Um, so yeah, I mean, these are, yeah, for a heavy infantry, kind of for poor armor is a bit worrying, but. They've got excellent melee defense at 56. So yeah, put these guys in a shield wall or a square these guys can do, which is a very useful asset to have when, um, when you know, uh, you don't have like maybe strong cavalry or maybe uh, cavalry really isn't your forte to bring. Um, but yes, so a really good asset to have um, that square that can defend the flanks if they need to. But yeah, melee attack 28, uh, melee damage 27, which I would say is a standard for spears but i'm not sure coming on to the next spear unit uh, armor at 40 health at 100 standard 115 morale um that's going to be 43 so that's uh, the same as these uh, amaroth sentinels and speed 37 so yeah a really solid unit i'd like to see it in a battle yet yet to see it used it's pretty untested um i think because most people bring the next unit along um, if they're going to bring any spear units. But uh, maybe if you're doing like a lower tier game with Lothlorien, this would be a viable unit to bring. You bring these guys and maybe also the Amroth Sentinels and bring a pretty mid-range Lothlorien army. I don't know. But anyway, we'll move on to the next spear unit, which is the Heroes of Amon Lank. So yeah, you go instantly from that um, mid-tier spear unit and you come to the Elite, and arguably one of the best spear units now in the game. The Heroes of Amon Lank. I mean, you see all that on the left there. You're green, green, green. You've got excellent melee defense, excellent melee attack, average armor. Average is, 
apparently positive. But yeah, melee attack, 43. Melee damage is still the same at 27. I was surprised it didn't go up, um, but that kind of makes sense now with my experiences playing with them. Um, but yeah, melee attack, 43 for a spear unit is incredible. Um, charge bonus, 15. Obviously, it's a spear unit. It's not good at charging. Melee defense, so 69. It uses that funny number. But yeah, it is incredible. This is a really good unit. Holds to the last man sometimes. I've seen it do uh, majestic things in a choke point. Um, we've got health at 125, which I think is going to be the standard for any elite infantry for um, for Lord Florian. A really, really um, beefy unit. This is going to be armor at 55. So yeah, not the greatest armor in the world. I mean, Lord Florian's got like, and the elves generally they have like decent armor, um, but it, it's not like strong and sturdy, say like the dwarves or something like that. But yeah, 55 is nothing to uh, sniff at. That's for sure. Morale as well. I mean, it's a 57. These guys, yeah, and I mean that's pushed up to 68 there were all those bonuses which you probably would get in the game as well so these guys aren't breaking like i said they they refuse to break speeds down to 36 so it's a little reduced but only like by one point missile block at 35 so yeah these guys they'll block some decent stuff there i mean put them in shield wall i'm sure that probably goes up as well and again these guys can form square which is again very useful for anti-cav um and things like that which i mean spears already a kind of good anti-cav but if you're getting rear charged always good to have that square formation in your back pocket but anyway that is all the spears. I mean, this looks like one of the my favorite looking units now, I've got to say. Um, but that is all the spear units. I'm now going to move on to the pole arm. So I'll see you guys in a second. So we are here again with a lower tier unit for Lothlorien. Another sort of like levy unit, which um, as you can see is going for that sort of like gray camouflage sort of look that we were describing, which is uh, common with these lower tier units. Uh, his mouth did not look healthy there. I'm, well, I'm going to say, I thought elves were supposed to have good hygiene. But maybe not. Um, but yeah, this is the Lorian Spear Company. So obviously goes with the Saw Company. Um, this is the, the Spear variant, and it's a polearm unit. It's a light polearm unit. It's a levy unit, uh, which kind of comes, I guess, with being light. And um, they have very poor missile block chance, which we all know now, zero. Uh, they get they have very poor armor, um, which, yeah, again, no surprise. I mean, look, at they're just in cloaks and just like in their... Um, yeah, just in tunics and stuff like that. And then they also have average melee attack. So, yeah, they're, they're not great, but they're okay. They're elven pole arms, I guess, at the end of the day. 135 man units. So, um, you know, very small, a uh, very large unit, sorry. Uh, melee attack at 26, which um, is probably going to be outdone by the next unit. Uh, melee damage at 31. I think that's going to be a standard. Charge bonus 20. Which surprise it's got us that much, to be honest. I thought it would be lower than the spears. Melee damage, or melee defense, sorry, 27. Which is not great really for a pole arm. You want that to be a bit higher because pole arm's kind of a defensive unit. Um, health 115, armor 20, as we saw there. Yeah, very poor armor. They're not going to be uh, defended by much. They're going to have to rely on that health to kind of get them through. Morale, pretty low as well. Um, they've got uh, 34, which is not great. And then the speed of 41, actually, which, you know, these guys are speedy. They may be uh, like pretty light, but they are speedy. Um, so yeah, solid unit, that's for sure. So this is, yeah, the uh, the Spear Company. They look pretty cool. I do like them. Uh, I do, I've do. i got nothing wrong with any of the looks of any of these units. I think they look all excellent. All I have complaints about is that these guys won't take their uh, swords off their backs when they go into close combat. That would be epic. Get their secondary weapon out. Um, we got the Galadrium Spear Warriors here. Uh, so this is the next unit. It's got the melee attack. Uh, it's excellent. Yeah, you can see up to 44. We've taken a big change here. So, I mean, I mean, look at the units as well. They look awesome. Um, we've still got that solid um, 31 melee damage. So, yeah, nothing really changed there. Uh, charge bonus 20 still. Melee defense 42. Much, much better now. We've really improved uh, the armor at 55. So, these guys can take a hit. I think that's the same armor as the, um, as the shock infantry uh, variant as well. I think the Gladrium uh, all have, like, the very much the same... Uh, morale is 48. Again, these guys are hold for a while. They're, they're good. You're going to have to kill a lot of them. They're a 100-man unit. So, they, yeah, they take a while to kill. 37 speed and 0 missile block. Um, as Yeah, I'm, keep, I'm repeating myself, really. Pole arms and shock have no missile block. But, yeah, that's all the pole arms. There's not many of them. Um, they've not got any elite ones. They've just got, I think their train ones, which uh, these guys are, uh, are pretty solid. They're pretty good for your bounty book. They cost about a grand. Uh, most of the Gladrium units cost of around about a grand, which is pretty good money, I think. You're, good, you're getting a lot for your money. Those Gladrium units can get lots of kills, especially the archers, which we'll come on to. Um, but yeah, these 
Let me know which one is your favorite unit, by the way. I'm really interested to know what is your favorite unit in the Lothlorien update, um, since I am showing every single unit off. Um, you do let me know in the comments. But yeah, we'll move on to the uh, the biggest section of the Lothlorien roster, the Archers. So I'll see you guys in a moment. So here we are. We are here with the low tier stuff. And as you can see, they're going back to that common grey sort of uh, camouflage. So yeah, we have the Lorien sentries here. The lowest tier archer available. They're a light bow unit. And they have, well, nothing going for them apparently. Poor armor. Very poor accuracy, which seems impossible. A three accuracy for an elven unit. Surely that's impossible. I want to know what these elves have done wrong. Um, they can't be real elves if they've only got three accuracy. Range 225. They've got some very good range though, even though they've got terrible accuracy. Ammunition at 16. Morale, it's saying 37, but that's all the buffs is 26. I think that's probably one of the lowest we've seen yet. Um, we've got no missile block chance. Uh, so yeah, not much going for them. Health 115. And then armor 20. So yeah, not taking a yeah, not going to be able to take many hits. Melee defense nineteen, melee attack eighteen, melee damage twenty five. So yeah, not great. Uh, generally, really been fighting or in um, or in combat. But I think if you mass these guys, they probably would do okay. Um, we've, I've seen in battles, and also I've heard rumblings that low tier archers are now being generally improved, especially if you level them up and use them on mass, they actually seem like they're pretty good, especially obviously against yeah, units always... nowadays that have zero missile block chance. If you're using this unit, even though it has three accuracy and you shoot at, say, shock infantry, you're hitting something and it can't protect itself. So you are achieving something, which is good to know. Um, so it does make low tier archers sort of viable, but uh, I doubt I'll be seeing these guys in many battles still because there are bigger and better things to be brought for Lothlorien. Which, uh, I mean, Lost Lorien, the reason you pick them is you pick them for their archers, I uh, think. But anyway, the next unit along, we, so we are moving up, and it's a, uh, a very recognizable armor. We've seen this armor before once or twice, so yeah, we are onto the Galad Hon archers. So yeah, using that same sort of armor that like the, the tier 2 sort of uh, units use, like the Naeth uh, infantry and the Amroth sentries that we saw. Um, again, not really got much going for them. Poor armor, poor melee defense, very poor missile block chance. I mean, zero again for that missile block chance. Health at um, 115. Armor's doubled to 40, though. Uh, melee defense has gone up a little bit. It's up to 24, so it's like a six-point increase. Melee damage is still at 25, and melee attack at 23. Uh, and the morale, as you can see there, 32. So we've gone up a little bit. They can hold, but nothing insane. Accuracy is now 13. So it's still pretty shocking for an elven unit, really. Think about it. Uh, accuracy of 13. That's 13 and 100 shots hitting. Um, range 225. These guys can hit for a long way, though. That's the, the big strength. Ball of Lothlorien is the range. They can hit anything before anyone else can. So you've got to get close. You've got to rush Lothlorien and close that range. Because Lothlorien is going to make you hurt with that range. Um, and yeah, ammunition at 16. So yeah, which is pretty solid. I don't know if any of the more elite units have more ammo. And the thing is, the elves, with their rapid fire, even like the low tier ones, they're going to burn through that 16 ammunition. So yeah, even though the elves like units are great um, with their archers, they burn through ammunition. Um, they're quickly out of it, that's for sure. You need, to, If you're doing a siege, make sure you've got plenty of resupply barrels for these guys. Um, but yeah, we'll move on to the next unit, which again, we, uh, we recognize as armor. Uh, it is the Galadrim Bow Warriors. So yeah, we've now got into the big leagues here. Um, still got that very poor missile block chance. I think archers may just generally also have zero missile block chance um, in, the, like, in the update. I didn't realize that. But uh, it seems that they've also been involved in that. We're now up to 27 accuracy. So we've doubled uh, the accuracy, which is great to see. Range 240 as well. So we've increased range. So if you thought it was bad with 225, 240, these guys are hidden like across map. Still 16 ammunition. Um, morale uh, says 47, but that's with all the boosts. 36, again, kind of hold for a while. But nothing like insane. They'll do a decent uh, job. Uh, in melee as well, because they've got 33 melee defense, so we've gone up again. Melee attack, 34. Still got 25 melee damage with that, that uh, big sword that they still, they pull out. Uh, armor, 55 as well, so they can take some hits if they need to, you know, with the arrows, um, or in combat, and health, 115. So yeah, I mean, this is the unit that I would personally be bringing. Like, this is the base unit I'd be bringing. I wouldn't bother bringing the other two unless we're doing low-tier units, uh, like low-tier, like, amount of money, um, or... 
I'd maybe have some spare cash, and I think I'll bring a, a Galad Horn. I don't think I'd ever find myself bringing in the lowest tier uh, Lothlorien unit. Uh, but I might bring the, the one that we just seen. But these guys, I think, would be the solid uh, choice every time. Followed by these guys, the top tier. So this is the Twilight Guard. Look at these guys. I mean, he looks mean, man, he does. He looks like he's ready for war. Um, but he's seen some wars. And yeah, an 85-man unit. You know it's an elite unit when it's got 85 men. I mean, the elves have an increase in unit size. This is probably the old unit size for the elves. Um, but yeah, 85 elves. You know it's an elite unit. Melee attack, 52. These guys can sl probably beat most infantry in a, in a fight. Like, these guys are sick in, f in a battle. Melee defense, 50. So that, again, can just about take any unit in a fight, really. Melee damage up to 36. So that's increased um, from most of the other base archers. Uh, they've got 55 armor still. Uh, so yeah, not really greatly increased there. But health up to 125. We've got missile block chance still at zero. So yeah, even though you're an elite unit, you can't dodge, am uh, dodge arrows, it seems. They've got, well, 68 morale, it says, but it's 57. So, again, they can probably outlast most other units in a, in a, like a, in a morale fight if it was coming down to who's going to break first. Range at 240. These guys still just cross-map, nuking with their arrows. Um, you've got ammunition at 16. Uh, so, yeah, they still burn through that ammo. That's the one of the big drawbacks, I feel like, with the elves. So they just burn through their ammo so quickly. And they've got good accuracy. They're only up a little bit, though. I'm up to 36. Um, so they're not like greatly more accurate than the Gladrim um, bow warriors. Um, but they are a little bit more accurate. Um, and, and what you're really buying, like like paying your money for, is a good, solid, like hybrid unit. These guys are really good melee. And they can take a charge. Like they're a heavy bow unit infantry. So I mean, they're not a bow infantry unit that's just going to get run over and die. And, probably, and you're probably going to be able to shoot them, be, uh, the cav, before you get hit hard anyway. So yeah. Um... This is a great unit. Uh, I limited to three, um, but yeah, really, really good unit, that is for sure. Um, we're now going to move on to the cab. I'm just going to just quickly go over here and just look at it. It should be, we'll get over and done with quickly. Uh, the Lorien Outriders here, 70 man unit. They're nothing impressive. They're another levy unit here. Um, obviously, Lothlorien cab, they do have some, but they're not great. They're not known for their cab. It's the archers, is what they're known for. Um, we've got very poor armor, good melee defense, poor charge bonus, melee attack at 26, melee damage at 36. I think that's going to be a standard charge bonus 30. So, yeah, not much better than some of their infantry. I think, like, the shock infantry outcharged them. Melee defense, 43. They are a melee cav unit, so they probably have better melee defense than attack, usually. Uh, armor at 20, not, yeah, not a great amount of armor, to be honest, they go with that gray sort of camo look again. Health 205, which I think is going to be a standard for the cavalry for Lothlorien. Speed's 95. It's pretty good for a, a cav unit to be fair. It's, it's, Elven cavalry is very speedy. Missile block chance 26. Not bad. Uh, it's at least better than most of the bow units um, that we've just had a look at. And morale is uh, 31, so not bad. And then we've got the next unit here. We're going back. This is a horse arch unit, which looks awesome, by the way. Going back to the old Amroth Sentinel look. As you can see there, these are the Nimrodel patrollers. Um, they got poor melee attack, they got poor armor and poor accuracy. Um, so they're nothing. They've got nothing on those Noldorian rangers that everyone loves to use in this game for like Imladris, um, which are so so good. But yeah, melee attack at 23, uh, melee damage at 25, melee defense 24, armor 40, health the same at uh, 205, morale's. A lot better though, 46. So these guys, like, they could hold okay, it seems, in a, in a fight they need to. 95 speed as well. Ammo at 16, so they have the same ammo as an arch unit, which I don't know what I feel about that. I don't know if you could hold more ammo or less ammo on a horse, really. I feel like you could have two quivers almost. And accuracy at 13, so they're about as good as the Galadhorn, um, like, archers. And these horses just keep nearing at me. And range 190, so they've actually got worse range than their infantry counterparts, which makes sense. They are on a horse, after all. Um, so maybe it's just harder to shoot. You've got Halder here, though, as the final unit. Where is my boy Halder? He doesn't like to get his bow out. He always just gets his sword out. It's a shame he can't change between the two. But uh, yeah, we have Halder's bodyguard here. So it's a unique unit. You can bring the Heroes of Amon Lank, and you can also bring the Twilight Guard as generals as well. But uh, I think most people will bring Halder. Um, just because it's Halder. But he has got some vulnerabilities. He's a very light bow infantry unit. So he, if you charge Halder, you're probably going to kill him in one, two charges tops um, with a good cav unit. He's got very poor missile block chances. We all know he's got zero. 
Um, very poor armor. He's a like uh, bow infantry. That's the way he's got like 30. Average accuracy at 34. I feel like yeah, should if he's a general, you should bump that up a little bit. Maybe boost him. Because he is a very light bow. I feel like you've got to like give him some bonuses somewhere else. He does have a bit more ammo. He's got 18 and his range is 240. Like the top tier range units. But... Yeah, he's, he's okay. He's also got pretty good melee uh, stats, 48 and 30, uh, 48 attack and 38 defense. Melee damage is 47. So I guess you are getting a relatively good hybrid unit. If you can send it into combat in a siege, perhaps, you'd do pretty well. Um, problem is, obviously, yeah, if he gets is in the open field, he's going to get mowed down by a cav unit, more than likely. People will realize quite quickly he's only very light bow. Even though he looks well armored, yeah, these guys are vulnerable. But yeah, that is all of the units for La Florian. So I'm going to quickly go over to the, um, back to, like, exit out of the, this battle. And I'm going to uh, show you a few rosters that I would possibly suggest for uh, a land battle and also for a siege and a s attack and a siege defense for La Florian. So I'll see you guys in a second. So here we are, we are back, and as you can see, um, I've covered just about every single unit here. This is the roster for La Florian. It's, uh, I covered literally every unit by the artillery, which I don't believe the, the stats change for Honor So, uh, yeah, we didn't bother showing that. You missed out on seeing the awesome Elven crew, and that is it. Um, so, yeah, as you can see, I'm on uh, Lank Heroes. Uh, you've got the Haldir Bodyguard and the Twilight Guard. These are all the generals you can bring. So you've got an option of a spear unit. Uh, a really good bow unit, and then a, um, I'd say a so-so bow unit. It's not, nothing as good as the Twilight Guard for, like, fit, like, uh, I think for the extra 25, this is definitely worth it. I feel like they've got a, I guess maybe you get some cool abilities. Yeah, you get second wind, uh, you get a few abilities, but you get, uh, like, encourage, which is also a very good ability to have with Twilight Guard. But anyway, I'm gonna make some land battles. Let's say this is a land battle. We usually use, um, 1700. Uh, uh 17,500 when we do uh, land battles on the streams. So, I probably would start off by bringing... Um, I don't know, actually. I did just say I would bring Twilight Guard to the extra 25, but I think I would bring Haldir. Um, I would certainly bring all three of my Ammon Lank that I can bring. I think these guys are god tier. Um, I'd then bring the Galadrim Bows. Um, probably four of those. And then it really depends. I feel like Amaral Sentinel is really solid infantry. You can bring a bunch of these guys. Uh, and then it kind of leaves you with a, a lot of options. It depends what the rules are. Usually we just do six of any unit. But I think I'm going to start bringing in range limitations. So I guess we could maybe even upgrade these guys. Um, but I bring some shock. I think you're going to need some shock uh, to, uh, to support on your flanks. Um, maybe against Cav, or just maybe in your melee fight when these uh, Amaral Sentinels eventually do give in. You've got something a bit more that packs a bit more of a punch. And then it's up to you. You could uh, you could bring one less if you wanted to, and then bring two pole arms. If you wanted to support that, like, battle line, I think the Galadrim Spear War is a pretty solid unit that could do that. Or you could, like I said, just get with, do the other way around and have just the one. And in fact, you could even just then bring Haldir. You could do that. I feel like that would be even better. You could bring your Twilight Guard. That is... A decent um, land battle army. I mean, you could bring the Cav. Maybe the Nimrodel Rangers you could bring um, instead of something else. Instead, I don't know. You could instead of maybe like... I feel like you'd have to sac sacrifice an Ammon Lank and bring a, a Bow Cav or something like that. Um, which you could do, but I honestly think the Cav is just not the way you're going to win a battle for Lothlorien. So I don't know if it's even worth bringing. You're better bringing your other strengths. which are really good spears, really good bows, I guess. Um, if we weren't to limit bows, obviously Lothlorien could bring more bows, and you, I'd probably get rid of do that, and then probably bring two Twilight Guard or something. Or, um, well, I guess I got one there, and I could bring like a another a like a Lorian sword. Actually, I couldn't. <laughs> I could bring a Lorian spear, though. We could have another pole arm, I guess, to support that front line. So we could do something like that. You got a few interchanges. Obviously, it depends what you want to do. Um, and obviously what the rules are. But there are a few options of what you could do. Obviously people will be like, ah, oh, you should do this Pope, you should do this. Uh, like you can do something much better. That's fine, everyone's got their own strengths. That's an army I would possibly bring. Um, you could even just bring the Loring Sword Company. So, um, usually we do 20,000. So I'll say we're on the attack to start with and we'll do an army on the attack. I would definitely bring Twilight Guard General. i just skip out Haldir. I didn't bother with him. I wouldn't bother 
I, I don't see the point. You just always get risk of just being charged or shot to pieces, I think. Without 30 armor, and when you get 55, you're protecting your general. I know it's an elven general. You still got to protect him. I would definitely bring a lot more Amaral Sentinels. I bring maybe five, maybe more than that. I bring three or four Shock. Um, I think bring the Twilight Guard, and then maybe two Galadrim Bows, and then some Amon Lank to fill those ranks. Look at that! You can already bring a lot of your tier tier three, tier four stuff in this uh, like build if you're doing twenty thousand. So that's like for a high tier game, that's good. I probably would bring another Amaral Sentinel. These then can hold the like, your front line. Then your shock infantry is your sucker punches. And the spears are really good on the, on the attack as well. Um, and if you find yourself on the back foot, they'll hold forever in a choke point somewhere. And then the bows. The bows. I don't need to say anything. These guys are incredible. Um, usually, maybe, you'll get limited to, like, full, full, full range in a fight. So you might have to sacrifice uh, a twilight guard here. Uh, and then you could just bring... Um, I'd still bring a... Sh uh, actually, no. Maybe I wouldn't. I would do a Twilight Guard there, and I would get rid of an Amon Lank, bring a general Amon Lank, and then bring, I don't know, a pole arm or something like that. You might need a pole arm in a siege, you never know. Um, but yeah, say you're doing that on the on the attack, something like that. And then on the defense, obviously, then you have uh, about 15,000 it works out at. So I, I just realized I could have just switched. But anyway, you know what I mean. Um, so I'd probably bring... I'd still think I'd bring uh, the Twilight Guard on the defense. And I guess if you're short on cash and it's 25, you could bring Haldir. We might find ourselves changing in a second. I think for the price, Amaral Sentinel's still really good. I would maybe bring a few Lorian troops. I feel like they might still be needed. Um, the Naeth Infantry, I've never really tried them, so I can't say anything. I still think the Heroes of Amon Lank have to be used. I think you just bring a few less. Um, I then would just bring the Galadrim bows. And then... Actually... Mm, you could bring maybe one Twilight. Um, and you could bring like an Amon Lank General. I'd then maybe bring the Twilight Guard here. I think you could still do two. And then you could probably bring a Pole Arm. And I think you're going to need a Pole Arm on, on the defense. And I think this is a relatively decent army. Um, you've got some low tier stuff. These guys will hold for a while. And also they can be cannon fodder if they need to. You've got your better swords. I wouldn't bother the shock. Like I think on the defense, I think you'll just get focused down and killed uh, much easier. Um... I'm on Lank Spears that hold forever in a choke point. And you've got the, the pole arms that can back them up. Good archers that can just focus down anything. And like I said, this is your strength. You can just... You can make a kill zone in a siege on siege defense with archers. So these guys, very, very key, I think. And like I said, I don't think... It depends on the limitations. If there's no limits on archers, you bring more, I think. Um, I'd just maybe scrap some of these Lorian bow uh, sword company, bring some better bow warriors or even more Twilight Guard. Because these guys back up as a second infantry and you've got to think about that. Um, so if you need to send them into the fight, they can do that. But there you go guys, there are a few recommendations for armies and that is a cover of every single unit in the Lothlorian roster. I hope you guys have a lot of luck with them in your future battles and I hope this, guy, uh, this video was a little bit informative. You learned a little bit, maybe. Um, I don't know. Um, but you guys seem to enjoy these uh, unit overviews. And yeah, if you want to send in your own replays of Lothlorien battles that you've done, or just any Dawnless Days battles, feel free to join my Discord. The link is down below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment uh, on what your favorite Lothlorien unit is. I'd be interested to know, uh, from luck or maybe skill, what it is. But until next time, guys, I'll see you in the next one.